Please take the floor. Hello, uh, everyone, and can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. Okay, perfect. Do let me know if something uh, happens with the connection. So thank you very much for, for having us here from the Working Group on Enforced Disappearances. And we have been, as you will, as I will also talk a little about, uh, involved in the issue and in touch with many of the families uh, from the massacres. Uh, so let me start by expressing solidarity to them. And we do know from so many places in the world, including from Iran, that it is the families of the disappeared persons that are driving the, the, the quest for truth and uh, for, uh, for accountability. So thank you very much uh, for that. And this is our deep uh, solidarity with them. Uh, so the, the, our mandate concerns enforces appearances. And this uh, consists of three elements. Well, we, when we think about uh, massacres, we might not always think about them being enforces appearances. And Certainly not all massacres are, but if the three elements of enforces appearances are met, then they are also enforces appearances. So the three elements that need to be met are deprivation of liberty by the state, that's the second element, and the third is a denial of the deprivation of liberty or concealment of fate and whereabouts. And in this particular case, we do know that there's until today a concealment of the fate and whereabouts of those persons. There has been a deprivation of liberty uh, and uh, there was an involvement of a state. Uh, so as with, with some other massacres, we do know that those are um, meet the threshold of enforced disappearances. And that's also why we have dealt with them in, in the mandate for many years now. So from Iran, the total numbers of cases of enforced disappearances that has been transmitted to the working group is 600, 599 to be precise. Um, and only 5% of those have been, um, have been clarified, which is a very uh, low number. And not even all of them have been clarified by the state. Some of them have been clarified by families that brought them to our attention. This is, of course, only the tip of an iceberg. So we, it's only the cases where the families have decided to bring them to our attention. However, it does show that it's a big number and there is, uh, and there is engagement. Which it also shows is that it's not only the, the cases concerning the 9088 massacre and the disappearance of, of those people have been brought also recently to our working group. And this is really a testimony to uh, the uh, perseverance of the families uh, so that the, the effects of, of those disappearances are on the families and on the community until uh, this day. Uh, we have uh, addressed uh, the issue of the 9088 uh, massacre in our regular reports. So just let me come back to the last three reports that we have published. Uh, the one from September this year, so the freshest, uh, we have reminded uh, the authorities in Iran uh, about their obligations under international law to search for forcibly disappeared, locate, protect, and preserve unmarked grades and investigate. And this was done precisely with regard to the 1988 massacre. And in 2021 and 2022 report, uh, we have also expressed uh, concern uh, with the concealment, and we said ongoing concealment of the burial site of those that have been forcibly disappeared and, and executed in, in 1988 uh, across the country. So the, one of the reasons that we continuously deal with, uh, with, with those cases as, as the Working Group on Forces Appearances has already been mentioned by the speakers uh, before me. Uh, the, this is the fact that enforces appearances are an ongoing uh, violation. It's a continuous human rights uh, violation. So this has been widely recognized by international courts. It has been recognized by UN treaty bodies and, uh, and also acknowledged in their national convention for the protection of, of, of all persons from enforced disappearances. So legally speaking, there's really no doubt that enforced disappearances are in, uh, in, in continuous violation. There is a, a general comment by the, in, by the Working Group on Enforced Disappearances from 2010, uh, where it specifies how it understands the fact that enforced disappearances are a continuing crime. So, and here I will quote, uh, the, the working group has said that the act begins at the time of the abduction and extends for the whole period of time that the cry is not complete. That is to say, until the state acknowledges the detention or releases information pertaining to the fate and whereabouts of the individual. Uh, 
And looking at the situation that we are discussing today, it is clear that the state that this uh, this crime is not complete, meaning that the state has not acknowledged the detention or and not released information about the fate and whereabouts of the individuals. So, in in the understanding of the working group and in the understanding of of all the international bodies that have dealt with that, this ongoing human rights violation has not been clarified until uh, today. And we've seen uh, in Iran and in many other contexts that enforced disappearance affect families over generations. Um, and so this is not only the, the, the people that have witnessed and that were close to, to the disappeared that are affected by it. Um, and, and what is important is that international law explicitly recognizes those families as direct victims of enforced disappearances. Uh, so it's not only the disappeared person themselves that are forcibly that are victims of enforced disappearances, but also their uh, close families members that are directly affected by the by the forced disappearance. So this also shows that there are obligations with regard to the families, not only with regard to the, to the disappeared and, and the unmarked graves, but precisely to the families that are left behind. Um, and let me just state that we have also, I spoke uh, 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 explicitly about the 1988 massacre, but we have also received uh, many examples of instances of disappearances that have happened after, uh, after that. And there is a, it, obviously an inherent connection between crimes that have happened in the past and human rights violations that are happening today. And, and the, the, the closest link has been uh, introduced by our chair today, showing how one of the family members fighting for to get to know the truth finds herself in detention. But it's also something that we do know that impunity, when impunity prevails, it leads also to other effects. And we have seen within the protest movement and within the last couple of months, enforced disappearance is a in, in particular with regard to women, uh, but also uh, ethnic and religious minorities. Uh, so thank you again for inviting us uh, to this panel and being able to contribute to this important cause. Thank you, Dr. Baranowska. I appreciate